Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is three o'clock, three o'clock sharp in the beautiful country of the Netherlands. Today, today, quantum communication and quantum key distribution. Welcome to another epic meeting. Talk about quantum photonics. Quantum is my life. Vamos. Let's go back in history. Remember the story of Leslie Park in World War II? They shortened the war by five years by cracking the Enigma code. The most romantic thing in physics is when two particles are entangled, or as I call it, dancing to the same music. And no matter how far away they are from each other, any interaction on one of the particles will have an effect on the other. And if no one bothers them, they will dance and dance and spin in opposite directions. This magical principle is going to enable next generation computers, which will make today's current encryption systems obsolete. In this big data world, this is the most dangerous threat to global security we are ever going to face. Just remember that we live in a vulnerable connected world in which computers control cars, operating rooms, and all financial transactions. Imagine the power a smart hacker could have. Funny enough, this magical principle of quantum technologies also has the solution, and that is quantum key distribution. An encryption with a purely random key that if anyone tries to decrypt, both sender and receiver know instantly, even before sending the data. So we need a quantum internet or a way of exchanging such quantum keys before the quantum computers arrive. Some say 10 years from now. I want to entangle leading photonic companies in this field and start new cooperations with telecom operators like British Telecom. Financial organizations such as the Inter-American Development Bank, space companies including OHB, the defense sector with PAE systems, and influential companies like Toshiba, Ericsson, and Adva. And so join us on Wednesday, November 11th at 3 p.m. Central European Time for a top-level discussion on quantum technologies. Sign up to participate in our online technology meeting or watch it real-time in our YouTube channel. I'm such a romantic for physics. Welcome everyone to another epic afternoon. For the next two hours of your life, for the next two hours of your life, we're going to have an industrial quantum meeting. And those words actually come together in our beautiful epic network. Thank you very much once again for all the supporters, for all the epic members, 629, I believe, epic members. And all staff knows them all individually. Our job is to make sure that not only you attend fantastic events, not only you have access to a great network, that our staff finds you potential suppliers, customers, and partners. I'm so happy to have this number one that symbolizes that we are now for three weeks by now the largest photonic association on this planet thank you very much and once again this is the 51 of the epic online technology meetings and today we are talking about quantum cryptography and qkd and the reason for that is that i do believe that there is a huge huge potential for bringing all the knowledge that we have acquired in the photonics industry to help the quantum community Today, this meeting is sponsored by Modulite, all the way from beautiful Finland, semiconductor lasers. They actually have their own MBE machine manufacturing and are able to go all the way to provide turnkey solutions. Eura, Eura AG, it has a mission and their mission is to make innovation successful. If you're looking for a partner to help you with your development, with your writing and with your with your partner acquisition for any eu grant eura is the key company and they have done a lot of success stories in the quantum business and we go to switzerland we have legion tech legion tech is the silicon native peak manufacturing partner that allows you low co low loss photonic integrated circuits with the dispersion engineer silicon nitride you can also generate entangled photon pairs and we're going to hear about this later on today and of course who doesn't know excelitas excelitas is the master of making any photonic components especially in the quantum industry if you're looking for high-end detectors go to excelitas these guys know what they are talking about and they are fantastic epic members thank you for sponsoring this meeting 
Without you, this meeting wouldn't be possible. And also, I would like to acknowledge our media partner today, Fiverr Systems. Thank you for communicating what we are trying to achieve here. And also, I would like to acknowledge and thank my quantum soulmate, Dr. Sana Pika. Sana, what's in the business today? Thank you so much, Jose, for the nice introduction. Jose, I gathered for you today the speakers that are playing a key role in the industrialization of quantum communication and quantum technologies. We have an amazing list of speakers, but also um, if you show us the guests we have today, we are covering the full supply chain, uh, going from uh, more than 10 end users in the room, uh, trying to get the best of quantum communication applied into defense security, into banking, into uh, communication of, of all kinds, secure uh, control. And also we have uh, uh, the generators of random numbers. Uh, we have the um, people making picks for quantum technologies. We have the photonic integrators. We have uh, system integrators, optics, filters. We cover it all the, all this, all the supply chain and we try today like you said to entangle these companies and get the best of the uh, of the best possible collaborations and this slide, uh, this very important to, uh, yes. exactly very important to say that these are just the people who signed up for this meeting Indeed, this slide represents the companies who registered for the meeting today. If you're an Epic member and you are missing your logo there, that's because you did not register. Don't let it happen again. Make sure that you register for the upcoming meetings. And most important, make sure that you do business and a follow up on the upcoming meetings. And just so you know, this meeting is live streaming YouTube. So just make sure you look pretty because the world is watching us. Hello, YouTubers. How are you doing? If you want to get in touch with any of the participants today, all you have to do is send me an email, jose.pozo at epic and I will be more than happy. I will be so, so fantastically happy of making that introduction. Also, this goes also for the Zoom room or participants today. If you can't get in touch with each other, please feel free to use the internal chat. If you, if you want to get in touch with each other after the meeting, send me an email jose.postatepic.com and also remember that after the meeting when we close the youtube channel we have our private one-on-one -on -one meetings between the participants if you want to have a private chat with any of the participants today be paying attention to the zoom room chat because to set germer my fantastic pr manager is going to give you the instructions for for this one-on-one -on -one meetings happening and that's all i wanted to say before giving the floor to our first speaker today and i want to make a big deal for this i started my phd in the in bristol university so i do know how important bt is in the quantum business how important bt is in the photonic business and what an amazing role they have played developing technologies that have been at the forefront of optical communications i love bt and I also am very, very happy to have Catherine White, researcher from BT, showing us the presentation today. Catherine, the floor is yours. I think we may have you muted. Thank you very much, Jose and Sana. It's really an, an honor to be here today uh, talking to the EPIC community. Um, so I'm going to talk today about uh, QKD security and the competitive advantage. Uh, next slide, please. Next slide. Um, I'm not advancing my slides, so thank you. Okay, so um, what what are the advantage opportunities and commercial advantages that uh, quantum communications and QKD potentially offer us? Um, first of all, we have to look at you know what is the threat to the existing alternatives, the competition, um, and we've seen in the past threats to the key exchange mechanism of RSA and Diffie-Hellman, the well-known return of the Coppersmith attack, for example, in 2017, was really significant and affected a huge number of smart cards and, and other systems. Secondly, of course, and, and primarily, we have this huge threat from quantum computing, um, the Shor's algorithm uh, for RSA and, and uh, finding the, the integer factors of, of a large integer. Um, and that's been generalized to other primitives like discrete log and elliptic curve. Um, the paper there actually shows um, a, a resource estimate for breaking elliptic curve. And, and it's interesting because it's actually order N now in the number of bits of the elliptic curve key. Now, admittedly that is for perfect logical qubits, but it does show that quantum computing threats are not necessarily as far away um, as, as we may fear. And there's also 
you know, uncertainties about the schemes that are alternatives for key exchange. Um, the well-known cryptographer Daniel Bernstein published this paper on elliptic curve uh, backdoors um, in, in 2016. Um, you know, there are potential uh, flaws and vulnerabilities, even in the new, new algorithms that will come from the new program uh, in 2023. So what quantum communications and QKD have to, has to offer is these unique advantages immune to all foreseen and unforeseen advances in computational methods. It's information theoretically secure. And there is the potential for detecting of tapping either of the key channel or in some modes, actually of the data channel itself. Um, it's a good fit for integration with bulk, uh, high capacity hardware network encryptors. It can be combined uh, with other methods of key exchange uh, to, to give dual resilience. And then for randomness, it gives true non-deterministic randomness. And I think there's no other way but quantum for non-determinism. Um, and there's a possibility for device independence to, to take us beyond even the vulnerabilities that might exist in some, some systems if they're not properly implement, implemented. And it, it has the ability to replace the courier. Next slide, please. So readiness is a big question for us. Um, and you know there are two huge areas of this in which I think we've seen major milestones achieved. And the first of these is standards and assurance. Um, we've seen the development of an ISO standard, which should become published, should move from draft to published within the next 12 to 18 months. Um, we've seen the development of ITU and ETSI standards. That's work that's been going on for, for years, particularly in ETSI. And that group, that work has actually underpinned some of the work in, that's gone into the, the new ISO standard. And then finally, we're seeing assurance. Um, we're seeing a common criteria protection profile underway, steered by the ETSI ISG. Um, QKD ISG, and that's hugely important to be able to validate QKD systems and make them production ready. And then we're seeing these exciting global programs to put things in the field and really test them and iron out the little bugs uh, in the UK uh, with the UK Quantum Communication Hub and Quantum Network, of which BT is very happy to, to have been a, a part with our leg out to Dastral Park from Cambridge. Um, and Open QKD and the enormous amounts of work that's going on across Europe to create a European quantum network. And of course, other parts of the globe, Japan, China, Russia, Canada, uh, South Korea, so much going on. And satellite, of course, providing that potential link up, very feasible link up between, between these networks. Next slide, please. So what do we need? Well, I think we mustn't stagnate in, in the technology evolution. Uh, we need continued evolution. And that means uh, exploring ideas like untrusted no nodes, which are an absolute um, holy grail uh, for QKD. And that all these new ideas need new, new components and new technologies, and they can also just benefit from enhancements in existing technologies. So improved single photon detectors with low noise, short dead time, and uh, quantum memories, the absolute holy grail, better clocks, better fre stable frequency sources for synchronization for certain protocols photon counting detectors. And I've underlined the ones there, which really are new technologies that need to move from the lab to, to the fabrication, to, to, to industry. So, and of course we need them all, cheaper, better, faster, smaller and lower power, uh, but together as, as a group, as, as collaborative, uh, we have the ability perhaps to change the world. Thank you. Thank you so much, Catherine, for this very nice uh, presentation today and for giving this uh, global overview of this technology. So you present at the very last slide, uh, like your wish for, for your wish for from Epic, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you have it, to, sorry? It is, yes, exactly. I mean, it's probably not um, a complete list, but uh, I'd certainly, <laughs> it's my Christmas list, if you like, to, to <laughs> Father Christmas, if Father Christmas is a member of, of Epic. That's that's what we look for the most. Yeah, Epic, you, you made us really uh, happy to see that. And uh, let me first ask uh, our guest who has a comment or a question to you. Uh, you can just unmute. Okay. Um, otherwise, you if I look at your list, you are already asking for a uh, single photon source and single photon detectors. And we have at Epic uh, our uh, friend from... Um, let me see, from Candela for single photon detectors. Hello? Yes, hello. Oh, hi. 
Hi. Well. Your your voice is a little uh, far away. Maybe we can fix the the mic uh, first. Yes, I think it's. Uh, otherwise, I would be happy to hear from uh, uh, Maxim. How are you doing, Maxim? From ICIC. Hello. Um, Hi. I don't know. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, well, excellent. Thanks very much. Um, uh, well, it was a very uh, interesting, you know, uh, talk. I think a good start uh, for, uh -huh. for for today. Um, we definitely are excited about the wish list uh, in the sense that it, it kind of correlates with uh, what we do in mm -hmm. some ways. I mean, not everything. Uh, but certain aspects on the single photon technology and, you know, extending uh, what we can do uh, for existing sort of standards. Uh, it's certainly our area. So uh, it'd be great to have a chat about that at some point. That, that would be great. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll limit my comment here for now. <laughs> All right. So let me see if we have another question uh, in the room. Yeah, please. Uh, first, uh, unmute, please. Eriko. Yeah. From Eden. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I think it was a very nice presentation. On the last uh, slide, which was presented, I think it's missing also a very important element, which is uh, uh, you know the synchronization between uh, for single photon detection with very accurate synchronization devices, and uh, I think this also should be included. You know, uh, very accurate timing. Yes. For right. photon correlation, photon coincidence, I and mean, this is very, very important. I think when when Toshiba and Ketz um, talk, um, they they will have even more to say about that, given how deeply they they are involved in the design of these systems at a you know at, at the detail level. Um, but yeah, ab absolutely. And actually, you know, I missed out fiber as well because new fiber technology could yeah. potentially reduce loss, change the RAM scattering. And, and, and change, you know, what we can do with today's QKD systems. Absolutely. Absolutely, and, and press uh, notes as well. Yeah, also another comment on this, on the list again. I think there is a, quite a lot of development on going on in the single photon sources, single photon detection. So we, if we be, it would be very good, the one on the future uh, seminar, to quantify the requirements, so whether, what, what is needed, essentially, because we are, a lot is going on there, and to establish a wish list for performance will be very appreciated. Yes, we probably need to work as a group to, to do that really, um, to get more, more input from the from the device designers as well. Um, yeah. So obviously B, BT is an end user and we sort of <laughs> see, we, we, we sort of see what might help the systems do what we'd really like them to do. You know, we always want more, we're, we're never satisfied. Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. um, but you know, we need to get the, the, the device designers into that discussion. Absolutely, I agree. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. We will get back to Nicolo later from Candela. They have a, an amazing single photon source detectors. And uh, please allow me now to go to our uh, next speak, speaker. As you know, quantum communication, very good for Datacom, but also for banking. And we have from Chicago, um, from the United States, we have Marcos. Marcos, hello. Yes. Uh, How are you doing? I'm good, I'm good. Actually, it's Washington, D.C. Uh, oh, sorry, from Washington, D.C. Yeah, my mistake. <laughs> uh, but anyway, thank you so much uh, uh, for having me today. It's a, a, real, a real honor to be uh, in, this, uh, in this meeting sharing part of our work on, on quantum uh, uh, encryption and and, uh, and other things. So uh, you can start sharing. You can start sharing your presentation. Mm -hmm. um, and right. okay, let me see if you cannot see me. Excellent, excellent. We can see. I give you the floor. All right. So first of all, I'll introduce myself. So my name is Marcos Allende. Uh, I'm based in, in Washington, D.C., as I was saying. And I'm the, the IT specialist on a, a blockchain, quantum technologies, and self-sovereign identity at the Inter-American Development Bank. And I'm also uh, honored to be the, the technical leader and coordinator of the Lacting Global Alliance. Uh, it is the, the Global Alliance for the Development of the Blockchain Ecosystem in Latin America and the Caribbean, led by the, by the IDP. So... Um, today, uh, I'm very pleased to share with you some of our work on, on quantum technologies since uh, 2017 at the Inter-American Development Bank and Lacte. Um, 
First of all, I'd like to introduce an Inter-American Development Bank for those of you who don't know it. Uh, the IDB is a, a multilateral based in Washington, D.C. The headquarters is in Washington, D.C., but we have country offices in all the uh, countries of Latin America and the Caribbean. Uh, for those of you that might know maybe the, the World Bank, it is a, a very similar organization with the difference that the World Bank works in the, in the entire world and the IDB uh, is a development bank for, for, for Latin America and the Caribbean. Um, and we are an entity that is uh, focused on, you know, giving loans to the governments of Latin America and the Caribbean and, and providing expertise in, in development projects like in education, energy, in those areas. But we also have in the IT department a, a, a division uh, that, um, or, or a tech lab, where I said, that explore, explores emerging technologies. And we've been doing a blockchain and quantum uh, on our own and also with external entities and with a specialist from other sectors of the ITB since 2017. At uh, the same time, the Lactin Alliance is a global alliance that is integrated for more than 25 entities around the world. It was launched with a, a budget of $13 million in, in, uh, in 2018. And basically we are uh, providing a blockchain infrastructure for Latin America and the Caribbean. So what have we been doing uh, on, on quantum uh, in these two, uh, uh, let's say, entities? So first, uh, uh, we published a paper last year and several articles. And then we have done to, uh, a, a proof of concept on quantum key distribution. And we are doing a pilot on uh, quantum uh, safe uh, uh, network with post-quantum cryptography. It is, to our knowledge, the first attempt to build a real quantum safe blockchain network. So for those of you interested in the paper, this is a free paper that is online. It has about 45,000 downloads. And we present, uh, for those that are not familiar with quantum, we present what is quantum technology. Uh, we actually introduce seven different types of uh, quantum technologies. We, we don't stick to quantum computing, but we present quantum cryptography, optics, atomic uh, clocks, quantum sensors, metrology, and, and those technologies that, that you know. And we also present the impact on, on, on different industries. Like we present the impact on energy, medicine, uh, um, um, uh, weather, like for, for, for forecasts and uh, finance and many, many, many other uh, industries. Uh, and then regarding our experimentation, as you know, we are all aware of, there are basically two alternatives uh, in terms of cryptography uh, to, to, to fight or to, to face uh, uh, the, the quantum computers, right, in order to secure our IT infrastructure. And these are post-quantum cryptography and quantum key distribution. So we started with quantum key distribution in 2017. We did a POC uh, in our headquarters. And basically, we partnered with ID Quantic and Entanglement Partners. Uh, we wanted to test the technology and exchange uh, first keys uh, between Analyst and Above that were two uh, different devices. We started in the same room. Then we separated the devices and, and we basically uh, encrypted the, the internal VPN of the, of the, of the headquarters. And uh, we started uh, doing like uh, video calls, internal video calls, to, uh, um, uh, in, like encrypted with this uh, uh, quantum key distribution uh, infrastructure. Uh, we tested this for like uh, uh, two or three weeks. It was uh, successful. We even attempt some eavesdrops, uh, eavesdropping uh, attacks and uh, we successfully uh, detected them. So uh, it was a successful POC, but it was just uh, that, a POC, but it was uh, good in order to socialize and to test the technology at the institution. Uh, I'm not going to uh, stop in the slides, just uh, this is this is something you can find actually in the paper. We created these, uh, these, uh, uh, these uh, pictures for the paper. And these are some of the photos that we took back in 2018. This is Dr. Bruno Hunter for, from ID Quantique and this is my team at the IDP. Okay, and now what we are doing is we are going much bigger with a much more uh, serious and scalable uh, um, initiative on uh, post-quantum cryptography. So we have this uh, large blockchain infrastructure for Latin America and the Caribbean that is the largest public permission network uh, blockchain. Um, we have entities um, like uh, five custom administrations, Citibank, the National Bank for Development of Brazil, and others using this infrastructure. And we are adding a, a layer of uh, post-quantum cryptography in order to protect the blockchain layer. 
So in the paper that we published again in 2018, we analyzed what was the threat for blockchain technology uh, from the perspective of quantum computers. And we identified two very risky areas that are uh, the asymmetric cryptography used in the digital wallets and the digital signatures, like for the transactions that people broadcast to the network, and also the use of an insecure internet because it is using like uh, RSA and Litigur with cryptography. We also detected that block mining in, in proof of work networks could also be affected for uh, by Grover's algorithm with a quadratic advantage, but that can be solved by increasing the difficulty of, of mining blocks also uh, uh, quadratically. And we identified that there was no risk in the reversibility of the hash functions. But now, how can we solve the threat then for asymmetric use of cryptography and also the use of the internet. So basically what we are doing is um, we partner with Cambridge Quantum Computing in this case with IDINIA and with the Tech Institute of Monterey. And we are uh, issuing um, uh, verifiable credentials that is a new uh, format from the W3C. But we are starting uh, with actually uh, um, an extension of the X509 certificate. So we are issuing extended X509 certificates that include a post-quantum key. And we are using that in order to encapsulate the communication between the nodes in the network. This is ap applicable not only to blockchain, but to any network. So we are encapsulating the communication between the servers with a SSL tunnel that we uh, basically uh, initiate with a post-quantum X509 certificate, a, a V3 extension. Uh, we are getting the entropy in order to generate the keys from, from the uh, iron bridge device that is a Cambridge quantum computing technology. And we are using the algorithms Prodo and Falcon for this. And also once these nodes in the network, once they have this post quantum certificate that they use for the encapsulation of the communication, they also use these certificates in order to multi-sign the transactions that they broadcast to the network. So additionally, or in addition to the elliptic curve uh, uh, signature that uh, you uh, use in a, in, a, in a blockchain network, they are also adding a post-quantum signature together so the transactions cannot be reversed when there's a quantum computer. And that's basically it. Uh, this is a diagram. The information can be found on our GitHub. We are doing all of this open source, so you can take a look at how are we achieving it. Uh, this is more information about lag chain in case you want to take a look at it. And uh, my wish list for Epic would be uh, we are we wish to collaborate on different initiatives around uh, quantum key distribution and post-quantum cryptography. Uh, we are uh, developing the ecosystem in Latin America and the Caribbean. So anyone interested, uh, please reach out to me. And we would like also uh, to keep exploring quantum safeness in blockchain networks. And this is my uh, contact information. Thank you so much again for the for the opportunity to be here. Thank you very much, Marcos. Uh, Marcos, two things. The first one, congratulations on how clean your kitchen is. That looks fantastic. And the second one, I really love that you came with a shopping list. That's really, really great. We have in front of you the, the, the supply chain of photonics. So my friends, they, they, do, they do make fantastic single photon sources, single photon detectors, low cost uh, and low loss integrity photonics, uh, low cost assembly. Uh, my question to you is, you have uh, an approach from a system level, but uh, how about the infrastructure? How, how does the, the current setup looks like and, and what kind of photonic components uh, would you be interested in seeing on that setup? No, that, that's a great question. Thank you so much, Jose. And again, let me uh, insist on um, being so thank, thankful for, for inviting me. Uh, basically, we are open to explore any uh, quantum technology that can be used ideally in production and ideally for a project with social or financial impact in Latin America and the Caribbean. So any use of uh, photonic devices or any other kind of device that can, we can leverage for uh, something that can improve people's lives in Latin America and the Caribbean, or that can improve, um, you know, our security at the headquarters or at the country offices at a corporate level, is something we are more than wish to uh, to explore. So more than welcome to hear uh, uh, what you guys uh, have. Thank you very much, Marcos. Muchas gracias. Let's stream away together now.
let's think about uh, if we had this call in like five years from now the, the covid is all gone we are all healthy we are all fantastically happy in our homes because we realize that we can do a lot of things from their comfort or from home so we travel a bit less uh, how does the future look like uh, in your perspective how do you think the qkd is going to make a difference in the banking well, uh, you know, I've been saying since 2018 that I think that QKD today is something that you can do over maybe 200 kilometers, or if you look at the Chinese people, maybe over 2,000 or 4,000 kilometers. But I really believe that in the future, we are going to have the possibility of doing QKD from, uh, you know, different devices like uh, cell devices, that we are going to have uh, uh, the possibility of establish QKD channels between different devices around the world with the wireless uh, connection with the satellites or something similar. So I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, and I think that's going to change uh, the way we encrypt information uh, today. Uh, I also think that um, that's going to change uh, uh, internet itself. Uh, not, not only because we are going to establish like quantum key distribution connections or infrastructure between different devices, but also because I think that we are going to uh, renew all the uh, cybersecurity algorithms with new post quantum algorithms that are now coming. And I think it's going to be a big challenge for everyone to really be able to update all those uh, uh, all, the, the, all those protocols in, in time in order to be protected. Marcos, it was an honor to have you here. Stay with us because I'm going to come back to you later, but we are going to continue with the end users. And now we go to Germany. We go to Deutsche Telekom. Felix Wiesel, thank you very much for being with us this beautiful afternoon here in the Netherlands. I'm sure it's equally beautiful in Germany. The floor and the attention of everyone goes to Deutsche Telekom, goes to you. Yeah, thank you for this. Hello, everybody. Here's Felix Wiesel. Um, I will start with an apology. So I was not able to get all the technology environment up and running in such a way that you can know uh, who's talking to you. So I included on a short notice my picture up here in the corner, so you know who I am. Um, together with my colleague Matthias Gonkel, who's also in the call here, uh, I will present you some ideas about Deutsche Telekom's ideas concerning the next couple of years. Um, so it's about QKD at DT. Um, okay, I can can't go on here, what's wrong? Ah, that's it. Okay, so that's a marking slide. This is our mission. We will build the security of the future. And the next slide will show you what our promise is. We will aim for three main pillars. Confidentiality, meaning no one interrupts your data if you want to keep it confidential. We will take care for data integrity. So um, even if your data or your communication stream is not encrypted, you surely might not want to have someone spoil with the content. So we will take care of that. And finally, a secure authentication. So especially in view of the talk we had just listened to, um, in, in the banking context, it is of, of utmost importance to be sure whom you are talking to when you're sending money around the wire or something. So this is our goal. We want to come up with a secure communication platform all over Germany. Um, for the main and central offices of our own um, infrastructure, we will pick out those that have the highest uh, security um, conditions and we will connect them all by uh, our own fiber. And that will be our first uh, and, and, and driving use case, which is we want to come up with a solution to protect DT's own uh, network assets. So the worst case is that some uh, evil Eve hacks into our networks and um, using quantum computer and all that stuff that Kathy was talking about. So someone um, starts fiddling around with our uh, domain name server, for example, and changes um, legitimate um, requests and, and um, redirects them to some uh, evil attacker. And for us, it is not even possible to detect such an intrusion because all the configuration changes uh, look as if they were real and, and, and yeah, legitimate access is done by our own network administrator. So this has to be prevented and that's why we are going to yeah, come up with this platform. But once this um, QKD platform is built and up and running, of course, nothing prevents us from going for further use cases. And those further use cases will be uh, at the first part, protection of governmental traffic and, and uh, the data from um, public agencies. But finally, we will also aim for customers from the from the public sector in terms of 
um, business customers in the terms of um, partners that have um, their own critical infrastructure from the health branches, from energy departments, um, e-commerce, banking, everything that needs to be protected from being attacked by, by quantum computers and their possibilities. I expect there will be questions about how we deal with trusted note and so, but I will rely, relay those, the, the answering to those to the later slides. So this is our architecture. We are aiming at a highly modular, modularized um, setup where we have complete control over all um, contents and of all components of the platform. At the lowest level, we will have the actual QKD system, which is a photonic layer and which is of most interest for you guys here in the call, at all, at call I guess. For us, of more interest actually is the, the thing above. So the, the, the three layers um, residing above the, the photonic layer. So this is for one thing, the, the local key management system, which is responsible for yeah, managing the, the secure keys, which will be provided by the QKD systems. And um, they will be uh, hosted in all of our central offices. And above that, we will have something which we call the hierarchical software defined network QKD controller. So this guy or this magenta block here in the middle is responsible for doing all the key routing and um, handling key requests, deciding how to prioritize different requests in case of a capacity uh, shortage and things like this. And at the, at the topmost layer here, we have the different applications. And as I said, when presenting the use cases, um, first we aim to protect our own stuff, which is our routers, our switches, our firewalls, all our network equipment hosted in our central offices, but also our um, colleagues doing the night shift in our network operation center. They want to get access to our network elements spread throughout the Republic, and they need to have secure access to all our network assets. Um, now in the same picture here now, you will see in the next step, we are able to include satellite QKD. So we are not only bound to have the terrestrial solution based on, on fiber QKD, but for the, for the whole network architecture or for the QKD platform architecture, we are agnostic toward the systems that do the key provisioning. And by having this uh, Lego approach here, um, we are also able to include PQC in a very natural manner. So there might be situations in a network where we there's absolutely nonsense to include um, QKD, for example, um, in antenna poles or so. As soon as some attacker has immediate access to those elements, uh, we don't have to go with those expensive and, and rather um, fragile systems and to, to, to use them. There we have to rely on algorithmic solutions and approaches. And then we can, of course, use PQC. And all in all together, we come up with something which we call best of both worlds. And that's another marketing slide, which can you see by uh, those fancy colors here. So that is not one that I wrote myself. Okay, that was what our idea is. And here we, I will tell you a little bit about our design principles because I have been asked for to get something uh, yeah, like a wish list <laughs> or the Christmas list as Cathy was saying. So very important for us is in order to deploy what we call carrier grade QKD networks, we need to have a clear separation between the actual QKD platform and those devices and those customers and those entities that are consuming those keys. So we are not going for a monolithic approach where everything is combined in one great box and one magic thing which contains everything. Um, also, we are actually not going to um, aim for a thing which is called co-propagation. There might be niche applications where it is necessary to have classical channels like 100 gigabit per second uh, communication channel and, and QKD quantum channel existing on the same fiber. But if it's not really necessary, we will exclude this just for reasons of, of performances. So um, yeah, that directly leads to the second point here. Our QKD network or platform needs to be minimally invasive. So invasive. So there's no chance to um, spoil existing assets and existing traditional deployed hardware and, 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 and software solutions. So we are coming from the bottom. It's uh, the photonic layer and, and we have, well, our platform has to adopt to things that already exist, not the other way around. Otherwise my colleague from the traditional engineering department will kill me and Matthias as well. 
So, and we need a smooth integration. So everything has to work with things that are already available today. So we are not talking about, sorry, I have to, for this one word to rely in German, we're not talking about Wolken Kuckucksheim, but we have to go for, so it's not a, a fancy dream or, or some, some, yeah, we are going for the real thing and that's why we are going, we are, we are needed, that we need to have real things as well. So what is needed? Standardization and openness that also was already mentioned by Kathy. So as I said, no proprietary monolithic solution from one vendor only. So we want to avoid those things that is called vendor lock-in. Uh, we are following a strict dual vendor approach, at least a dual vendor approach, but not only to have competing um, suppliers for the same entity, if you remember my architecture picture, but also for the different layers in between. So not everything from one hand, but we want to be able to exchange partners for whatever reason. So we need those modular building blocks. And here's already one exception. This one exception is coming from our experience that uh, it is actually ha rather hard to allow interoperability even for classical photonic systems. We are willing to accept for the time being that the Ellis and Bob modules or whatever happens down on the physical layer for the QKD systems, they will come from the same vendor and the same system supplier. So we are not going to have something like a black link approach or alien wavelengths to have an Alice sender from one company and a Bob receiver from another company. Not yet, maybe in a couple of years, but not today. And for this dream to work out and to, to be realistic, we need standardized interfaces. Also a point that Cassie mentioned, so you might already have recognized we come from the same school. So we need certification and we follow strongly the so-called software defined network approach, which goes for a centralized entity, which controls things. Of course, it's not a single entity in there for redundancy reasons. We, we will have more of the same at different geo-redundant locations. Okay, summary. Deutsche Telekom, we are going to build the secure network of the future. And this is not only for ourselves, but for everyone, not in the same, on the same time scale, of course. We think QKD and PQC as being the same thing. Both of them should be quantum resistance. And QKD is meant for the inner network, so for the for the backbone networks and for our aggregation networks, where we cannot allow for having some PQC algorithm, which might be spoiled by a not yet invented um, quantum algorithm. But everywhere else where it's suitable, we rely on PQC and QRA. Our use cases, as I told you, are first our own network assets and the protection of them, later on protection of governmental traffic, and finally protection of critical infrastructure from different realms and different branches. Our platform is, um, or the architecture for our platform is modular and we don't allow for any yeah, single vendor thing. And what is needed here is standardization and certification. And finally, speed. Oh, that's the wrong thing. I should have, uh, <laughs> okay, sorry. In the new version, there stood um, pace here. I, I got the uh, got wrong slide here. So we, we are not going for speed in the term in the sense of, okay, I will stop here. So that's what we're going for, uh, what is needed, pace. So it's not enough to wait for 10 years until academics and researchers did their job, but we go for this now or say next couple of years. So thank, thank you very much for this. Thank you so much, Felix. This was a very good talk. And uh, it's clear that you want off-the-shelf solutions for, for this system. And uh, let me first see, there's someone writing a question on YouTube and also on the chat channel. Uh, that's nobody but Jose. And he's asking, uh, it's good that you want to do a uh, telecom plans for uh, national, nation, nationwide QKD, but by when? So what is your view? Uh, what are your views for this? So when we will be finally done with the platform or when we start with the platform? Yeah, when, when, when do you think it will be done? It will be really uh, applied. Okay, so if it's, uh, the problem with QKD is you can't offer a service or something uh, if you don't have already the, the whole platform. Um, so of course there will always be some customers where you have a point to point connection which can be served, uh, which can be um, offered. But as I, as I have shown you in the pictures, we want to have the, the, all the country covered. And for this to start, we have to, to start small, which is point by point. And then like a cancer, we are going to grow. Oh no, not like cancer, like a, like a crystal. 
uh, we, we plant different seeds and then they, they um, grow and connect to each other. And actually our, our goal is to already start now. So it's not a question of years in the future. Uh, the technology is ripe and mature and um, commercial systems are available. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Felix, look, we had just the, the elections of the United States, by the way, the color of my tie does not reflect my interest or anything like that. Okay. We just had the elections and now we are talking about recounts. Uh, do you think, do you foresee that we'll have QKD in the, in the, in the American elections in 2024? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Actually, I don't think so because there's no real, no. Uh, okay. To be, to say it bluntly, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, it's good that we have machine uh, manufacturing in the room, and we have a question from uh, Tobias, our friend from Examtech. Tobias. Yeah, actually, it was more a reply to uh, Jose. So we also have <laughs> questions. Um, and yeah, firstly, a great program, a really nice presentation. And also the last points um, in your presentation, Felix, I think uh, summarize it really nicely. So you want to have a standardi standardization and a pace. So you want to move uh, rapidly. So I think, well, uh, that's just what, what we also have in mind as a machine manufacturer. We um, have a development framework that combines the R&D world, but transfers it to scalable production world uh, in an open access development framework. Little spoiler, we will uh, un um, unveil or publish this product in uh, the Epic product launch, um, probably uh, December. <laughs> so we're still discussing about this. Um, yeah, and this development framework is, can really be used to, um, yeah, to, uh, to kind of um, integrate a machine into a code and not use a machine and a code on this machine. So we really want to accelerate developers to, to move forward um, building those new products. Um, one customer reference which we have is QN, Quantum Photonics. On our website, you can check it out. Um, yeah, and I would suggest for more details, come back to uh, another epic meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Tobias. You're a super epic member. And uh, what is <laughs> really, uh, and among uh, our end users today, uh, we have the Italian Navy as well. How are you doing, Ugo? Oh, hello, everybody. Um, I had, uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. If you speak a little louder. Well, I was just, it's just the microphone. I was just wondering after uh, Felix's presentation about if he foresees uh, just a QKD future for secure communication or is there some idea running on uh, oblivious transfer or bit commitment, for example, uh, which is more robust than uh, QKD to side channel attack in a, right, in a real world? Uh, okay, so that was a question to me, I guess. Yes. Yes, okay, so uh, no, not yet. So, our, um, yeah, what we are hoping from the QKD platform is basically the distribution of secure, uncorrelated uh, bit strings or bit streams between different endpoints. So, we are not aiming yet for um, distributing quantum states. I know there is a lot of activity right now from the, from the European Union to go for European quantum internet and they are also aiming for distribution of entangled states. For us at the moment and for Deutsche Telekom, entangled states are uh, yeah, exciting and very highly interesting from a physics point of view, but not so much from a um, rollout and deployment point of view. So the first thing we are going to use QKD is actually really using the quantum states to produce or to generate secure keys. And, every, and, the, and once we have them, they are digital. And then we are only working with digital keys as before. So we are using high secure modules in the locations. We use established key storage mechanisms. Everything else is done standard. So QKD, the key distribution, solves exactly one a use case, if you so want, which is distributing keys, nothing else. Later on, we can talk about using quantum teleportation, quantum money, quantum bits, all whatever that can be done with the quantum world. I think Harald Weilforter is going to talk a little bit about the possibilities. I'm not sure that's wild guessing, but so, okay. 
again, I will stop here. For the T, very clear, QKD is the one thing to go for. Hugo de Seglie is today representing the MOD from Italy, the Ministry of Defense. Uh, he is a technology scouter, actively scouting technologies along any supply chain for the defense sector. Hugo, grazie mille. Thank you very much for being with us this beautiful afternoon. Can I ask you what could be your Santa Claus Christmas list? If you could close this meeting with a couple of contacts, what would be their profiles? Uh, no, at, at present, I'm just here in a reactive uh, listening to what is uh, ongoing in uh, in epic context just to understand and make some views for the future uh, we, are, we are constantly being contacted by companies like Biosystems, Vitalis, and we are really happy to see that the, the, sec the security and defense sector are, are helping out with this, with this movement for the quantum technologies. It is great to have also the Italian MOD with us. Back to Dr. Pika. Thank you so much, Jose. Uh, thank you so much, Felix, for the very nice uh, talk. And thank you, Hugo, for being with us today. And stay there. Maybe you'll change your mind about this question at the end. <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure you will have a lot to, to, to request for. So uh, please allow me to go to our next uh, speaker. And it's good that we spoke about the connectivity and the, and the networking system and so on, because we have in the room Adva. Helmholtz, how are you doing? Hi, um, I'm fine. Thank you. Um, so my, my name is Helmut Grisser. Um, I'm responsible for our research uh, for QKD within uh, Adva Optical Networking. And I guess I need to share my screen now. Yes, please. So let's, let's try to do that. Are you able to see uh, the first slide? Yes. Yeah. OK. Um, yeah, th thank you uh, for uh, inviting me uh, for this very interesting um, uh, discussion. Um, I will focus on uh, how to deploy QKD with, with an optical transport network. Um, and um, let's go to the yeah, second slide. Um, I, I wanted to start with uh, basically looking at two, two different notions uh, you very often see when, when talking about QKD and uh, related security. Um, if, you, if you use a uh, key that is exchanged uh, via the uh, quantum key distribution system uh, for one-time padding, you can, uh, at least that's, that's one condition to, to achieve information theoretical security, but the disadvantage is that you do have low rates, low data rates, uh, and uh, can only uh, encrypt uh, uh, certain services. Uh, ADFA, uh, as a uh, transport equipment provider, we are looking more into the higher data rates and uh, we assume that uh, the uh, exchanged key via QKD is used for symmetric encryption. I think that had been assumed for, for some of the previous talks uh, already. Um, that uh, allows to support very, very high data rates. Um, and uh, that's the most suitable for, for optical high-speed communication. Um, and in terms of security, people often say this uh, refers to uh, so-called long-term long security. Uh, why long-term security? Because um, um, if, uh, if the QKD implementation is, is uh, done uh, right or correctly, you could assume that uh, there would be uh, no progress either in conventional computing or quantum computing or mathematics that should uh, put uh, your, your data at risk. So you should, uh, you should be secure, your data should be secure uh, for the foreseeable future. And um, that's actually what we are, what we are trying uh, to focus on. Uh, that, that does assume that, uh, of course, that the, the AES encryption is still secure, even if a quantum computer is available. And uh, people usually agree that uh, with, uh, with the advent of a, a large-scale quantum computer, uh, you might weaken the uh, AES encryption, the metric encryption, uh, but it shouldn't be possible to, to completely break it, or you could strengthen it by, uh, by lengthening the queue. Um, 
so what what are we doing uh, in uh, terms of deploying uh, uh, QKD together with transport equipment? So ADFA is uh, a partner in the Open QKD uh, um, European Open QKD testbed project, and here uh, at that slide uh, I've displayed. Uh, all of the uh, test beds and use cases we are going to support within OpenQKD. And as you can see, we are basically uh, working together with uh, all, uh, ma many of the uh, big uh, uh, telecom uh, telecoms in Europe, be it uh, BT, uh, where we had already the, the very nice presentation, uh, Telefonica, uh, Telecom Italia, uh, called um, and uh, also Deutsche Telekom. Um, most of these use cases uh, and, and test beds we are looking at here are actually uh, looking into uh, secure transport encryption by, by means of a QKD uh, key. Um, there, uh, there is uh, one, one use case uh, that's uh, a special one, interesting one, where uh, uh, the Austrian Institute of Technology together with Fragmentics is looking into secure storage, where, uh, which is a very interesting example because it, it actually combines uh, uh, post-quantum with QKD for uh, ensuring uh, long-term secure storage uh, solutions. Um, uh, there is also one uh, test case we, we have set up uh, in Madrid uh, uh, together with Ready Madrid that's uh, using a, a single fiber working case. So in case you're sparse of fiber and you can't afford uh, an extra fiber for the quantum channel, you actually can uh, use um, a so-called single fiber working uh, setup that works with a single fiber for the data channels and has the second fibers and for the quantum channel. Uh, th this leads to um, a, a lower channel count you can support, uh, but uh, it has a w very good um, uh, op operational uh, conditions because you, you, you really don't uh, need to, uh, to mix uh, quantum channels with, uh, with data channels. And uh, this is a configuration that's, that's supported from, from ADFA as, as a product and makes it much easier than, than to deploy such uh, solutions. Um, for many of the other use cases, we actually, in, in the OpenQKD, we, we have an extra fiber, an extra dark fiber for the quantum channel, which makes it um, relatively easy to deploy these uh, use cases. And, um, 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 and um, many of these, so many of these uh, use cases actually are, uh, as already mentioned by, by Deutsche Telekom, also uh, focus also on higher layers, for example, SDN control and, and key management, which is uh, very important uh, on top of uh, just the physical layer we, we might uh, tend to, to concentrate on. So uh, when, uh, if, you, uh, if you're asking now, um, uh, yeah, the, maybe maybe one one more uh, use case I, I'd like to mention is that uh, the one from uh, uh, Toshiba in Cambridge, where we already worked in the past uh, for the Quantum Communications Hub. Uh, that that's planned to to be extended uh, over over longer distances, and I think that's that's also very very interesting uh, development uh, to to allow longer distances for for quantum key distribution. Um, so this is this is mainly uh, still research because obviously it's a research project. Even if the focus is very much uh, also on uh, operational aspects, and I think it's very important that we have such a project where um, ma many many uh, users of that technology, many many carriers, are actually able to get hands on this technology and uh, trying to understand what what it means to. Uh, to work with quantum key distribution in practice, because I guess there are uh, lots of people who say it's uh, it might be too uh, too delicious, too complicated, and I think that's really where we have to get people uh, hands-on experience uh, working with the technology. Um, if you're now um, asking where we are currently, uh, what what can we do, and what 
can what can't we do as we had that discussion before uh can we already for example deploy a nation a nationwide network yeah probably not uh what you can see here is uh what you actually can do and uh, uh so this is uh the relatively simple point to point connection for example for financial institutions connecting their uh, uh data centers over uh, a distance that is typically uh, around 50 or, or even below 50 kilometers point to point. Uh, the, uh, the advantage here is very often that you, you can share the QKD equipment uh, for many channels uh, for a very high data rate that is transmitted over so that could be 40 or maybe even up to, up to 80 channels uh, with 100G or more. And that also makes it relatively uh, cost efficient if you look at the costs per uh, encrypted bit. And this is really a use case uh, that can be deployed with technologies that is available now um, and uh, might, make it, uh, might make it interesting for uh, some of the potential users. Um, obviously, there is a, a wide range. Uh, and uh, what's what shown below here is um, um, the quantum communication hub network from, from BT, where we support it with our transport equipment. Uh, this is a, a link that uh, went over multiple spans with trusted nodes in between. So the circles indicate trusted nodes. And uh, the quantum channel was transmitted on, on the same fiber, in the O-band of the same fiber, uh, uh, as, as we transmitted the uh, data channels. And this is uh, certainly a much more, more complicated use case. I think it's interesting to see that it can be done, but uh, I think it's also clear that uh, there is still some, uh, some way to go in order to make the integration of quantum key distribution into optical transport networks more, more seamless. So uh, one, one point is certainly um, uh, the distance, the maximum distance you can go. So the span distance of an optical network is typically more like 80 kilometers. And if you uh, need to transmit the quantum channel on the O-band in, in order to, to reduce uh, the crosstalk from the data channels, uh, then um, many of the commercial uh, quantum key distribution systems uh, uh, will reach uh, their limitation. Uh, and uh, another important point is if you actually try to uh, transmit the quantum channel uh, together with the data channels, and as, as I mentioned, you get you get this kind of crosstalk you would you would like to avoid, and um, which actually leads to uh, relatively complicated optimization uh, you need to do with in terms of uh, the, the uh, launch power of the data channels and the, the margin you might might get there. So basically, um, uh, this uh, might be the most two two important technical improvements uh, we would like to see from this. Uh, kind of devices uh, in order to get uh, easier integrated. Obviously, uh, in order to, to increase uh, acceptance, uh, we would, uh, as uh, Catherine White had already mentioned, obviously we would like to have it cheaper. Um, and um, um, certification is, is uh, an additional, in addition, a very important point uh, that probably will uh, will increase the acceptance uh, a lot of those devices. What we can do now here, you can see on the right, what we support uh, uh, currently is uh, 10G and 100G max ponder for, for OTN that can use uh, quantum keys for encrypting with uh, symmetric AES encryption algorithm. The, the interface is using the standardized Etsy uh, uh, QKD 014 uh, interface. And we also, obviously, we also support um, uh, certificate-based authentication uh, for the system. Um, we are coming up with an, uh, similar solutions and for, for, for an Ethernet box that uh, goes with 1G and, and 10G. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't have an extra wish list slide here, but um, maybe, maybe I can, uh, as a summary, I can repeat um, what, what, we, what we think would be necessary in order to uh, move the uh, quantum key distribution solution uh, a little bit out of the, the corner uh, of uh, 
expensive and maybe just for high security, very high security uh, applications is, uh, it, it has to, to fit better to, to transport networks. It has to uh, be more cost efficient uh, uh, and um, certification is, is a very, very important point. Thank you. Thank, thank you very, very, very much for, for this. Actually, first of all, congratulations because the collaboration over the last seven, eight years that you have done with BT, Toshiba, ID Quantic has been driving this industry in the right way from the very beginning talking about standardization, talking about SDNs, talking about system architecture. And that is why we have been in the lead. So first of all, on behalf of the whole Europe, on behalf of the whole Epic, thank you very much, Adva, for driving this. We have a few questions in the room and room for cooperation, but the first question is going to come to me. I love the test beds. I love them. They are fantastic. But I want to interact a bit better with them. So what is the process? How can companies supply technology or access these test beds? There is um, so, so usually the, the test beds within OpenQQD are, are driven by uh, uh, the, the companies who, who set them up. So so we are we are helping with our transport equipment to to set those things up. Um, there is a, a very nice opportunity with, in OpenQQD that might be also interesting for for the audience. Here is so there are actually two open calls within within the project that tries to to get into into the project additional contenders that uh, pro propose uh, additional use cases. And uh, the first open call already happened. And uh, within that first open call, for example. Uh, uh, if I go back, uh, uh, Telecom Italia proposed uh, a 5G use case that will be now done within within the project. And another example is uh, the uh, um, the use case we do together with Colt, uh, that uh, ID Quantique and Fraunhofer, which has the uh, idea to uh, to protect. Uh, uh, video data stream for uh, for next year's Ber Berlinale, so the mm -hmm. um, Berlin but the Film Festival. Is, is, it's not a closed club, right? So they are welcoming, they are open, open QKD, yes. they are open to, to new technologies. So they, they are, they, they, if you have something, and this is for everyone, if you have something that can contribute to, to quantum for 5G, so you can contribute to a QKD link that the one that they're doing in Eindhoven with Indian phosphate chips, you mm -hmm. have to contact them and you can also contact me and Sana because we know them very, very well and we'll be happy to do the introduction. We have a couple of people who want to ask you questions. So I'm going to give them the floor. The first one I'm going to, I'm going to VPI. I'm going to Chris Maloney. Chris, VPI is a great company. I love the way that they do system design for chips. What do you do in Quantum and how could you perhaps help Adva? Yeah, thanks Jose. Um, actually, I have a slide here prepared. Um, I think you can see that now. Crystal clear. Perfect. Great. So at, at VPI Photonics, um, we believe in empowering you to define the cutting edge. So one way that we do that is through uh, participating in some of these forward-looking European research projects. One in particular is the EU quantum flagship um, unicorn project, where we developed a system-level model library for QKD. So this plugs in to our existing, our most popular tool, the VPI Transmission Maker Optical Systems, which is used um, for optical designing and simulating optical transmission systems. So one thing that I can see um, us helping with is in this QKD system design, um, studying some of those coexistence scenarios that you uh, discuss, um, where we account for component imperfections, but also make some estimations for uh, secret key right and do some optimizations. So I can, I think this relates uh, really well to what um, Helmut was just discussing, where um, uh, this is just a very brief example where we have an existing classical uh, uh, channel. So uh, eight lane, 200 gigabit, 16 quam channel that exists. And if you want to apply a, a, a quantum channel or a QKD uh, transmitter to this, we can study things um, like the optical spectrum and optimize um, channel spacing based on the Raman noise, um, but also do some optimization um, 
uh, problems such as uh, looking at the modulation variance, how that impacts the secret fraction. And so in this case, you can see as that increases, the secret fraction increases, but at some point the excess noise um, starts to degrade um, the secret fraction. So I think there might be some um, areas where we can collaborate and uh, we're trying to learn about this as well and develop this product. Um, and I think we can help solve some of uh, your challenges as well. There is obviously room for cooperation. Of course, time is limited because you only have two hours. But after the meeting, we had the one-on-one -on -one meet, uh, meetings to, for you to find that. Another thing that is happening, happening in the UK, and I love the UK, I cannot hide that. I'm going to my friend Andrew from Bay Photonics because I just heard that they have a new cooperation with BT, seven million pounds. Oh my God, so much money in quantum. What are you guys going to do at Bay Photonics? Andrew? Glenn, I Hi, may have, sorry. yes. Sorry, um, <laughs> we had a- It's such a beautiful beer. You look fantastic. I'm gonna ask you for the Santa Claus Christmas card. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, thank you very much, Jose. Um, so just to, yeah, uh, thank you for the uh, opportunity to say a little bit about uh, Bay Photonics. Um, uh, we've been working on uh, supplying uh, uh, proof of concept and prototype devices for many, uh, quantum projects, mostly funded by Innovate UK here in the, here in the, in the UK since uh, around about 2015. Um, this year, we were very fortunate that we started five new, very, uh, very uh, uh, great projects, uh, very large projects, and uh, that's enabled us to uh, in, in increase our headcount from 11 employees, uh, sorry, from six employees to 11 employees, and move into uh, Another epic building, not uh, not obviously the uh, number one world leading uh, association, but uh, epic, the Electronics and Photonics Innovation Centre here in uh, sunny South Devon in the uh, UK. Um, there's a quick list there of some of the new projects, and I'll pass you over actually now to Andrew, who will hopefully um, put a little bit more detail behind those quantum projects that we. And here is my friend Andrew Robertson. Hi, Andrew. Hi, Jose. Great, it's good great to day. see you. Great session as, as normal. You know, I always smile when I look at you because I know that you have the same passion for photonics like I do. What are you going to do at Bay Photonics that is going to drive QKD? Well, Air QKD, the, the project there, that, that is, we've talked about the, the communications over fiber. Air QKD is secure comms in free space. And that's a 7 million euro project led by, by BT. And uh, I'd, I'd like to take a, to take a little point of... Uh, Answering your question that you asked, you said, uh, how do you take part in these test beds? Well, one of the things you need to do is be able to interact and integrate with the people in the test beds. And that's where we come in in the supply chain, because if you've got a great idea, whether it's a quantum dot or some new emitter, then you need to actually integrate it in a package so that you can then put it in. The, I think you describe it as a a MOX box or whatever box goes into these systems. So that's where we come in. And, uh, you know, I feel excited like uh, 20 years ago with the telecoms boom, and we're talking about the same things, standardization, certification, we'll have multi-source agreements. It's all, it's all gonna happen again. But uh, hopefully this one will, uh, will not be the, uh, the, uh, the bust that happened with the telecoms, it'll go on forever. Andrew, we know each other for some time now, and we both see that this is something that is going to drive the industry. And we, I'm so happy that we are both working on this. I'm going to, by the way, I'm going to go now to another innovative company. I'm going to go to Multiphoton Optics. Ruth Huberts, you have a question for Adva. What's on your mind? So, can you, yeah, obviously you can hear me. I just have a, a, a quick question because you talked about a cost per encrypted bit. So what, what I'm very used to is the cost per bit. So does the cost per encrypted bit add to the cost of bit or is it something in between? And what, what is the cost of encrypted bit? Uh, so, you, so your question is with respect to how, how much uh, we, we could uh, expect from a customer to pay in addition for uh, encryption uh, compared to un unencrypted transmission? 
Yeah, the, the, the question is, is it is it on top of the unencrypted or is it a complete new solution and how does it compare to today's price per bit? Yeah, um, I would say uh, you certainly can uh, can charge a premium for, for encryption, yeah. So nowadays, uh, a lot of the traffic uh, uh, is still unencrypted, but uh, I think our customers and especially we were quite big in the market of data center interconnects are, are increasingly aware that it is a value to encrypt the, the data. But here we're obviously talking about classical encryption. So I think uh, customers are increasingly willing to, to spend extra on encryption, but that uh, that's, uh, doesn't mean that they, they are willing to, to spend uh, double, double the price of, of transport. So they, they probably think more about uh, a, uh, a increase of uh, perhaps uh, 20 or 30 percent rather than 100 um, percent. If it comes to quantum key distribution, uh, the difficulty we, I think we still have in the community is how to define the additional value of uh, quantum key distribution over classical encryption. And uh, uh, here it definitely would help if we have some, some certification procedures that uh, uh, that defines uh, a uh, dedicated uh, security level for, for what you can achieve with quantum key distribution, then it would be definitely easier because you can't expect that uh, a customer uh, has uh, experience in the uh, quantum technologies and, and can, can understand what, what this would mean. Thank you very much, Helmut. Thank mm -hmm. you very much, Ruth. And now we go, now we go to Ketz Quantum Security. By the way, those guys have just told us that Bay Photonics made a lovely, I love the word, lovely package for the quantum random number generator. Ketz Quantum Security is a success story of this ecosystem. The floor and the attention of everyone goes to you, Chris. Hi there. And hopefully we are addressing Felix's pace comment. Uh, how do I make this big screen, full screen? Oops. Yes. Oh. Um, my name's Chris Irvin. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Cats Quantum Security. So at Cats, what we're doing is we're combining the power of quantum technologies to solve, as we've seen, some of the most important security challenges on the planet. Um, so we have a lovely picture here. I mean, we live hyper-connected lives. I really want people to stop and think just for a second how much of your key information lives in this ephemeral cloud. I mean, you might be taking notes right now. How much of your personal and banking information is stored in all those websites you're signed up to? I mean, just take your simple contact book. How many of you actually know your mom's mobile phone number anymore? Um, and if we think beyond ourselves, this is what we're focused on at Ketz. This is the 5G world and beyond. Um, and if you talk to people building this world, none on this call, of course, but usually if you talk to them about security, you'll likely get one of two answers. Either security is done because they're using the latest industry standards for security, or it's someone else's problem. Um, but you've already been hearing that it's absolutely not done. All of those industry standard techniques are rapidly approaching their end of shelf life. You've got increasingly sophisticated cyber attacks with machine learning, artificial intelligence, and most important, quantum computing are now coming on strong. It's no longer 50 years off. Quantum computing has been progressing in leaps and bounds in just a few short years. And it's going to rip our current information security to shreds. Even worse, we're likely not even going to know when someone's reached a large scale quantum computer because it represents such a large advantage, they'll keep it secret. And as for being someone else's problem, well, at Cats, we've decided that this is our problem. And so we're building the world's first complete quantum safe solutions provider. Our mission is to protect what's now the world's most valuable resource, information from the threat of a quantum computer. Oops. And with quantum computing coming on strong, what we've done at Cats is figure out how to miniaturize quantum safe hardware into a size, a form factor, and it's been mentioned a couple of times, at a price point that makes it commercially interesting to telecommunications, data centers, defense and space. In fact, CATS are some of the world leaders in integrated quantum cryptography for hardware solutions. Our founders performed the world's first chip-to-chip -chip quantum key distribution demonstration and many subsequent ones. So just really briefly, what we started is by developing two technologies. So integrated quantum random numbers on the top here, these produce some of the most random numbers on the planet, which sounds incredibly boring until you recognize that every past, present and future encryption algorithm requires them. 
And then on the bottom, we have our integrated quantum key distribution system. It allows you to transmit secure pairs of digital keys, say between you and I, so that we can safely lock up our digital data and send it back and forth to one another. And all of this is based on chip technology. They're the size or a fraction of the size of your fingernail. They're manufactured in standard fabrication processes, and they have the same high performance as many of the competitors. We sort of intimately understand how to eke out the highest levels of performance from integrated quantum photonic devices. And this performance translates into competitive advantages for our customers. And so using these cutting edge integrated quantum photonic chips, we've completed the development of our first products. You can see them here on the right, quantum demo kits. Our QRNG demo kit was ready in January of this year. Uh, our QKD demo kit has been slightly delayed by this wonderful COVID pandemic we're going through, but it's now expected in Q4. And then we're continuing to evolve these in our roadmap to provide quantum add-on cards with specific functionality, as well as we've heard a lot of software mentioned as well to allow easy integration into networks. And you're looking ahead to sort of fuller suites of quantum safe crypto products, products, key management systems, quantum safe network orchestration software, that kind of thing. Now I'd be lying if I didn't say the first thing we're looking for is a few more customers. I'm sure everybody in the audience always is. Demos, field trials, small development contracts are a great way to, for you to start exploring how this technology fits into your own business and to upgrade your systems to make them quantum safe. And just a little bit of interest allows us to generate a lot of investment that can then go back into to, to shrinking these systems and bringing down their costs. I mean, to be honest, I really wasn't sure what to put on this slide. I decided to focus on some of the proof of concept projects we've actually already delivered. So from our flying QKD transmitter on an Airbus UAV, we secured sort of control uplinks and data downlinks. So we partnered with a post-quantum algorithm startup, CryptoNext, and combined multiple tools together to enable quantum safe digital document signing. And perhaps the biggest of all, you've, you've heard from BT, we've done some work with them. So you've heard from Kathy about their cutting edge demonstrations that they're doing. BT perhaps has been one of the most forward thinking quantum safe telecoms providers in the world since at least the early 90s when they started exploring this technology. Uh, it's always been a bit of a tough sell. We've heard cost and size mentioned in these quantum encryption solutions, um, but together in this project called Aquasec, we're doing all, our small part to bring an integrated chip based approach to bear. So beyond these POCs, what are we looking for? Well, a number of different partners in our supply chain. Number one, we've, we've just heard from uh, Bay Photonics, high quality photonic packaging is key to enabling the highest levels of performance, but also keeping costs down. That's where a lot of the costs can go. Um, two might be EU PCB manufacturing assembly. That'll, that would allow us to provide fully sovereign solutions within the EU. We've heard software come up a couple of times, software expertise to help us build quantum safe SDN network orchestration software. Certifications always come up, so certification experts to help certify our products. And then the last bit is companies who focus on space. This has also come up. We're absolutely convinced that the way you enable global quantum safe communications is with chips like ours that contain not one, not even 10, but hundreds of transceivers. And for that, we need some help space hardening our hardware and space qualifying our devices. Lastly, if there happen to be any investors in the audience, we are currently Series A fundraising. We have a lead. We're talking to lots of people. But anyways, I want to thank you very much for the, your time and attention during the quick talk. Please get in touch if this is something of interest and we can do something together. Thank you so much, Chris, for this very nice talk. And yes, we have every single one of what you named in the room, even the space one. And Andrea knows how much I <laughs> have been running to have a talk from OHB. So um, thank you very much again. And uh, let me give a word to, because you said you want customers. We have BAE system, uh, systems in the room. Roberto, how are you? We can hear you. Hi, uh, please unmute. There we are. Excellent. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're already um, talking with Chris and a few other players about involvement in uh, some preliminary projects uh, for the UK MOD. Um, can't say much at this point because it hasn't started, but it, it is exploring where, where um, quantum technologies, QKD and others can help with future military communication systems. Thank you so much for being with us in this room. And uh, um, can I ask you, Roberto, a question? According to you, what is this uh, step that is missing uh, for quantum uh, QKDs to be simply commercialized? Is it just the miniaturization or? Uh, 
So I think I think certainly some of the things that are already being pursued now, miniaturization is important, um, but um, these components will have to fit into bigger systems. So I think we just need more standardization, more collaboration between entities leading towards potential certification, um, everything to do with how one design, tests and evaluates and certifies a complete communication systems. Without that, I think it's, I think others would have said the same, it's going to be difficult to, for this technology to be omnipresent, to be everywhere. So it'll take time, you know, this involves all of us to come together, it involves standards, it involves a whole, whole host of work of bringing end users together with some of the leading technology experts. Um, and it's, it is starting to happen now already, it just needs a bit more time. Thank you so much. Um, back to you, uh, at Gates, you said that you would like to know about, more about packaging and space qualifications. We have Alta Technologies in the room. Hello. Uh, please unmute from Alta Technology. Hello? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I can hear you, I think. Uh, Mark? Okay, so um, can I uh, now go back to um, our uh, friend from Candela earlier, uh, he was trying to speak and the mic was not fixed. Uh, they have a single photon sources from Candela, it's a company in France. Yes, hello. Yeah, we can hear you now, perfectly. How are you doing, Nico? Very good and enjoying the, the discussion. Uh, can you tell us about Candela? Yes, so I prepared a slide. I'm going to share my screen, which you should see now correctly. Yes. yes. So at Condela, uh, the past three years, uh, when we have been creating this spin off company from a CNRS laboratory near Paris, we have been uh, working to commercialize efficient uh, generators of optical qubits, which are based on semiconductor, three, five semiconductors. Uh, and uh, which englobes nanoemitters in uh, photonic cavities. And uh, the interesting technology that we developed at Quandela is that we can specifically position this single emitter in a specific cavity to allow high uh, extraction efficiency and provide therefore uh, high purity quantum qubits. So our products uh, is, uh, are photonic chips containing a set of these sources, uh, which are placed in a cryogenic environment at four uh, up to eight Kelvin. But what we had put a lot of attention to is to interface these devices to uh, other uh, optical system, which the clients and the user may, uh, may have. So we have developed uh, modules, which helps to filter uh, these single photons and interface them through a standard optical fiber to other modules. And I presented a list here. So we're working in a research collaboration uh, with a group in uh, Jerusalem to interface these devices with the photonic entangler to generate a uh, linear cluster state of entangled photons. And we work also with the integrated photonic uh, community to realize optical quantum computed platform. And this is done uh, providing a uh, single photon which are rooted uh, by a device that will commercialize soon uh, into different spatial mode. And of course, we are working hard to try to push these technologies towards a telecom wavelength. So to interface also with QKD modules, always through standard optical fibers to provide both single photon and eventually a more complex state of quantum light like entangled photon pairs or even cluster state of entangled photon to even move in the longer term to more complex quantum network protocols. Thank you very much, Nicolo. I have to say one thing. Three years ago, three years ago, Epic had no activities in quantum technologies. Uh, because we focused on five years time to market, we didn't have any activities in quantum technologies. And Juan de la was our first member in quantum. <laughs> Nicolo, I'm forever thankful for because you opened my eyes. My PhD is in quantum physics. You opened my eyes on how much business we could do on this. Today, quantum is our biggest market. So thank you, Juan de la, for starting this at Epic. And thinking about market, the next thing is a big thing. 
QSide put a quantum enabled photonic integrated circuit product in the market. And this is a huge, huge paradigm shift on the way that a lot of companies are seeing now quantum technologies. From Barcelona, one of the most beautiful cities in this planet. Carlos, thank you very much for being with us. Tell us about QSide and most important, how can we make QSide a great company, even greater? The floor and the attention of everyone goes to Barcelona, goes to you. Thank you very much, Jose, for this wonderful uh, event and thanks everybody. So I'm very happy of presenting here uh, progress from our company QSide. So as, as Jose mentioned before, so we are a spin-off company from, from the Institute of Photonic Sciences, ICFO in Barcelona. So we spun out in 2017 and started operating in 2018. And we've been working in the field, started um, in QKD for space, but then somehow specialized in technology development for random number generation. So this is what we, what we are now fully focused on. So we're, we're building quantum entropy and randomness solutions and, and integrating them with, with our customers and partners. So what we do is, is this. Then what we have to offer, uh, as you mentioned, so in September, we, we commercially launched our first module. We call it the FMC 400. And basically, it it's, has been specifically designed for a specific target system, which is based on FPGAs, in which we have a, a certain bunch of customers already uh, using it. So this has been deployed for, for more than um, a few hundred thousand hours in, in relevant environments. And we're very proud of this achievement. So the main, the main things that this, that this product um, does today is it generates uh, 400 megabits per second uh, raw random numbers at entropy bounds above 90%. Something that uh, it does, uh, we call it randomness metrology. This is something that we started in academia and then we are streaming into all of our products, which is to answer this question on, is it random, is it quantum? So all of these things, we take it very seriously. So we developed this methodology. Uh, so this is embedded in our products and we let our customers uh, use this um, features and and the important thing is this FMC interface for this product. So it's it's designed to integrate smoothly, and we provide everything to to use this product. For those that do not use the, the this, they cannot integrate this in a plug and play way. We have prototyping kits with standard interfaces, Ethernet, PCI, and USB. So this is uh, we have prototyping kits available with graphical user interfaces, libraries, all of it, and we'll be launching commercial products next year with those interfaces. And we have specific solutions for, I'm talking about QKD specifically, for, for continuous variable and device independent technology. So um, we've been de deploying some specific features for that, and in, in particular for DI, which is more a research effort at the moment. But we, we developed during our research uh, time something that we called fresh QRNGs that had some very specific features. So we're still providing uh, that to some uh, research laboratories. And finally, uh, most of you probably from other Epic Talks and other talks uh, have seen our progress on photonic integrated solutions. So have, we have a fully integrated photonic quantum entropy core or source. Uh, this is also available prototyping kits uh, starting to ship to some of our trusted partners at the moment. What we look for, <laughs> many thanks. Um, as Chris was saying, so we're, we're, we're trying to find a couple of things, right? So one, we're partnering with some, with system makers. This is this is the main thing we're doing. So partnering with them, helping them integrate our sources, and we we just walk them through the process. Uh, we want to understand also better the randomness needs, and so that we can improve and customize our next product releases. And this is this is what we've been doing. We've been partnering early on and and bringing features that make life easier for them. So this is a big thing we're doing trying to find partners that want to uh, improve their entropy generation, both in QKD, of course, as this meeting is about, but also in classical systems. And we're doing both things. We're also working on high performance computing applications. So that's another area that we're happy to, to talk to. And we're also looking, and uh, we have certain activities as well on this front. So we collaborate with end users. So this might not necessarily be customers of our technology, but we, we're working with them, doing pilot projects, doing demonstration, use case development, so that they can test and get their hands on the initial deployment of quantum technologies. So we're very happy to partner with these in users and partnering with other quantum hardware makers to make interesting use case development. So this is it in a nutshell about QSight and thanks a lot for having us here.
Thank you very much, uh, Carlos. Thank you very much for being such a supporter of Epic and for all what you're doing for the Interactive Photonics community. We need it. We need a success story, and now we have it thanks to you. Uh, when you say about what uh, what kind of partners, I'm going to reshare your last slide. When you say about the kind of partners that you are looking for, you say one thing about understand your randomness. The randomness needs better. Uh, what are what is the profile of companies that you would say, Jose, bring me in touch with these guys. I really, really want to talk to them. So it's really about hardware system makers, right? So it's an understanding random needs better means what sort of rates these people need, what sort of performance in terms of, for instance, there's people that does not need a bit stream of uniformly distributed random numbers. They need something slightly different. There are people that have a challenge that they are modulating, uh, uh, I don't know, an amplitude modulator or, or whatever, and they need to drive it in run with random numbers. And, and there, are, there are challenges there in RF optoelectronics that we've solved in the past and that we're very happy to, to support them in integrating these and making their system better. So understanding randomness needs means this for us, also in terms of size, how big it has to be, what sort of interfaces fit better in their systems, because our, our objective is to make, make like life easier for them and integrate something that is convenient for their systems. Challenge accepted. Naila Said from IBM. How are you doing this afternoon? Naila? Yes. Hi, can you hear me? Okay, crystal clear. Thank you very much for being with us. We just heard our Q side story. What's on your mind? Yes, it was very interesting. Uh, uh, indeed, uh, there is a lot of interest about quantum random randomness, and this is something that uh, we see uh, plenty everywhere because it's something that really could make a change. So it, it was very, very interesting. And thanks uh, really for, uh, for this uh, presentation, Carlos. So uh, you, you see much. that now we had uh, we had cats and we have QSide, we have technologies that are very mature ready for IBM implementation. Absolutely. So I hope that we can bring them in touch with you. IBM is a very, very active member of EPIC. We are very proud of having IBM in the European Photonic Industry Consortium. Thank but you. Carlos, I don't finish there, Carlos. I continue. Helmut from ADVA, what's on your mind? I wanted to ask what, what are your plans with respect to certification? So if you use quantum uh, randomness or if you use randomness in general for security reasons, um we we usually try to to stick to some some certificate uh, certified product yeah right. so there, there there are a couple elements so one is what's a, what's established in the industry right now right and there are a couple of reference i'd say at least reference standardizations one is from bsi in germany the other one is from from nist in the us so complying with those standards is something that that that, that is achieved so uh, that would be the easy answer. I think what's interesting also going on in the community is is uh, is it is there going to be new standards that that you know take the quantum part as a differentiating factor because technologically they are something different than standard physical random number generators. I'd say we're we're not there yet, but there are very interesting efforts. We are also monitoring and active on those discussions, both in Europe and the US. So we'll see where the future brings us, but I think there's something very relevant, and I, I and I'm I'm confident the market can also be leading in accepting those sort of things. So with quantum random number generators, we have the ability to understand better the entropy source and the physics of it. So we can move from the standard stochastic modeling of devices to physical modeling that will bring more trust and transparency across the supply chain. And this is something we're making available already, even if standardizations do not force us to. Carlos, you are one of the racing stars on this beautiful EPIC network. Thank you very much for telling us your story and for looking for partners here. You wanted equipment vendors, ADVA and IBM are going to talk to you. And to, yeah, I'm going to talk to you also, Carlos. Let's go together to, to Munich. Let's go to Bavaria and let's have a beer. We're going to Munich and we're going to the Munich Center for Quantum Science and Technology. Harald Weinfurter, thank you very much for being with us. The floor and the attention of everyone goes to one of the most amazing cities in Europe. Goes to Munich, goes to you. Yeah. Thank you very much. And yeah, unfortunately, cannot welcome you for a beer now. But I'm happy to show you uh, our MCQSD consortium. Uh, I myself am a member of the LMU Munich and the MP. Uh, and uh, the MCQST now is a cluster.
funded by the German Research Foundation. Uh, there are several of them dedicated to quantum technologies here in Germany, but uh, we are one which really encompasses uh, quite a lot of uh, different partners. So we have about 60 partners from all over Munich universities, the technical universities, our the University of Munich, Max Planck Institute for Quantum Optics, the Walter Meissner Institute dedicated to superconduct, and then the Deutsche Museum. Uh, don't uh, misunderstand Deutsche Museum, it's the science museum uh, in Germany and it's one of the largest in all over the world. And they are taking care of our outreach, especially. So, I mean, the goal of our group is really manifold uh, so that we also uh, initiate outreach and of course as well. So, and uh, since many of us are already in the business in the quantum uh, information field uh, since uh, yeah, decades almost now, uh, we are also well connected to uh, other centers of quantum information. So the main goal of our uh, unit is uh, to understand all the new concepts in quantum science and technology, because only if we really understand them, then we also can make them uh, tangible and practical for the real next devices. Okay, so, so that's both uh, parts are our goal, the understanding, but also to make them uh, useful at the end. The whole uh, consortium is divided into different fields. What you see here, quantum information theory is one of the uh, main components, which also spreads out to then to the other uh, groups. Then uh, quantum simulation uh, with experiments with uh, tens of atoms, uh, quantum computation with new initiative on superconducting uh, quantum, uh, quantum computer, uh, quantum metrology and sensing, of course, to, with really outstanding uh, sensitivity and precision and new systems uh, quantum matter not uh, which which really uh, and allow to use then uh, quantum features like topology etc and then of course we also have explorative direction where we expand quantum information into other fields like particle physics quantum communication of course is a uh, real uh, important part so of course as uh, such a cluster, there are also, of course, all types of support programs for all career levels where then perhaps uh, industry can pick them out then easily as well. And then, uh, of course, as I mentioned already, outreach. So we have a lot of meetings and, uh, and presentations, but not only for uh, academia, but also for industry and the general public. So because that's also really one of our goals is to get in touch because I guess we could identify uh, several uh, possible applications uh, and uh, quantum communication is surely one of them uh, where we are very active, uh, especially in free space systems, but also then uh, in fiber-based system. But in free space system, we have more or less uh, sender and receiver systems for handhelds all the way up to satellite links. Handheld sounds funny for secure communication, but check with Tim Spiller, who is also here in the session, he uh, pioneered this approach. Our concept is really that we uh, enable full integration uh, into any uh, conventional uh, communication system. So uh, nobody ever should uh, think about using quantum uh, key distribution because it just should be integrated into the whole system. So this is a picture of our new sender device. Uh, so, so actually everything is here inside in the center of the picture. So more or less, that's all what you need. The size of it is now down uh, at about two matches, not match boxes, two matches only. Uh, and it's pretty robust. So we are very optimistic uh, to, uh, that it will work in this uh, uh, small uh, cube satellite, what we hope to launch. And yeah. I don't know whether it works out next year, but sometimes. And then there are also a lot of developments towards the next step, quantum networks. So perhaps, uh, Jose, that's not really on your time scale with five years, but uh, never mind. Uh, I mean, this is where we hope that uh, we really can uh, contribute a lot to the uh, quantum internet of the future. And this brings me now already to my wish list uh, that um, in Germany, there is a project, uh, it called, was called uh, Optic Lock. Actually, it was uh, led by Toptica and then uh, academia partners. 
uh, where it was really possible uh, to get the almost up to the precision of the state of the art uh, optical quantum clocks, uh, atomic clocks uh, in a two 19 inch racks. And that was amazing to me. So all the partners uh, contributed academia with the technology, et cetera. Uh, and then the, in the uh, academia, uh, the industry partner uh, with new uh, components, more robust, more compact. And that worked out really nicely. So I guess uh, if we want to really get an quantum internet, then I guess we should start sooner or later something like this. Uh, like optic clock, then also for the internet systems. What we can offer to you is uh, that, uh, I mean, you saw that we are more or less uh, representing all of quantum information. So I guess we would be something like a one-stop shop uh, for everything what concerns quantum technology. We are already uh, in good contact also in projects with uh, a lot of uh, companies around. Uh, and uh, we are very interested in future uh, collaborations, we can offer information for you, whatever uh, we can help you, just let us know. Thank you. Thank you so much for this uh, uh, excellent talk. And uh, we know that, uh, especially in Bavaria, there is about 200 million euros put into these technologies. Am I wrong? Or more, right? Uh, well, I don't <laughs> know how much really, but uh, never mind. I mean, you know, there are, uh, in politics, there are always a lot of numbers around, flying around. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Good I, to know. <laughs> I wouldn't want to confirm one of them. <laughs> Okay, that's but we'll good. See, we'll see. I mean, I mean for sure. I mean, it's 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 a good time now, and uh, I guess we have a lot of a uh, lot of developments, and uh, also from from the industry side already, there are new components uh, coming up and so on, and, and which also enabled uh, our our experiments and developments as well. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, you made a nice uh, wish list, and uh, I wish you, you will find a lot of people here that. Uh, can make your wish list come true. We have a lot of uh, very good uh, EPIC members. Like, uh, um, let me give the word, for example, to Exilitas here. Yeah. Richard. Hi, how Hi, are you? Richard. We can hear you now. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> can second. you tell us? <laughs> yeah, I'll just share my, uh, share my slide here. So hopefully you can see that. I'll just go into uh, presentation. Excellent. Here. Can you tell us uh, what you do at Excelitas in relation to quantum So what I do at Excelitas, I'm the uh, product manager for um, our low light level detectors. Uh, Excelitas have been making these, I'm gonna randomly go around this slide. We actually launched the first ever uh, commercially available single photon uh, avalanche diode uh, back when we were RCA back in 1987. Uh, since then, uh, we, we were part of eg and and then Perkin Elmer. And then we became Excelitas back in 2010. We're now you know, nearly a billion dollar company worldwide. We uh, bought Keoptic a few years ago. So we now have lasers, light sources, all kinds of product uh, available. Particularly for quantum though, it's our SPCM, single photon counting module that we've been making, uh, like I say, since 1987 and continuously improved. Now it's it's got really the best PDE at 800 nanometers. It's, it's a great, great at even longer wavelengths. They've been used in space for quantum uh, key distribution applications, as well as other metrology and uh, wind LIDAR. So they're a, a very capable APD, very rugged module, very great electronics around it. Uh, we're here just to learn. Uh, we know we have our device, but it, it may not be everything for everybody. And we want to know what it is that, that people need, um, especially in the silicon. We're not, we're, we're not ready yet for in-gas, but in silicon, we have a great APD. We want to know how we can adapt the product and give you what you need. It, it, it's that simple. Thank you so much. We have. Oh, sorry, yeah. Great, then I That's can good. jump in. I mean, first of all, uh, of course, we are using uh, Excelitas uh, single photon detectors already since a long time. Most likely also yeah. when it was still called Thank RCA. You. <laughs> uh, and, and we have good experience. And if I want, uh, I'm allowed to add to my wish list, I would like to have just uh, four or six uh, detectors, just chips, just uh, next to each other. Uh, not in a module with four detectors, but just these four. We actually know, did. We like did a little. Would uh, kind of really give us the option for a new receiver right away. 
I'll talk to you a uh, load about that, how we did something like that once uh, some years ago for uh, but an astronomical application where we had four of the little APD chips with a uh, lens array above it and then uh, the electronics spread out from there. So we, yeah. we, we may be able to. <laughs> This is this is very nice. I have a question here from uh, yeah, sure. uh, Hagei. Uh, I think the question is uh, rather too hard. Hagei, can you introduce Quantela and tell us uh, your question? Uh, thank you, Sana. Mm -hmm. uh, Quantela is a, a Jerusalem-based uh, company which aims to reduce the cost and ease of integration of uh, QKD products. Uh, that's in a nutshell. Uh, and uh, also, uh, Nicolo showed before uh, our joint experiment from my lab, not from the company. So my question is, uh, th there's a very large need, in my opinion, in, for all everything we spoke about today, for an OEM Ingas uh, Geiger mode uh, APD. Uh, now, there are a few companies already make, making very good products, but they are all aimed for labs, and they are not in an OEM uh, a profile. So maybe that will be the best way for you, for Excelitas, to get into this market to offer something that no one else is offering. I think it's much needed. Thanks. That's uh, yeah. It's a good. Um, that's a good thought. I mean, we do have, uh, and we have done custom versions for people, and, and we do look at the uh, user specific. In, especially in volume applications. I can't really talk about any of them because they're always uh, confidential. But yeah, what, what you see on our website is, is the standard version. Uh, what we do for people is, is often different. Yes, and that's why I, you- I'm specifically, Sorry, I'm specifically asking about Ingas, not about silicon. Yeah. Yeah, in, in, Ingas is a very different kettle of fish as a product. And uh, it's, we're not right there yet. We don't have the right type of, uh, APD and and it doesn't suit our electronics, so we would have to devise something new. It's something we're certainly looking at, but it's it's like a you know it's it's on the roadmap rather than uh, about to pop out the door. Thank you so much, Richard and Harald. That's why uh, these meetings are very important. Then you know the back scene and what's not. Yeah, on the it, it, it's great to get <laughs> it's great to get that feedback. You know, we have our ideas from our little, you know, from, from, from our you know uh, fab in, in Montreal. But it's it's great to have this feedback as to what people are really looking for. So thank you. Absolutely. And uh, now we will stay in Bavaria, and we but we're going to space because I heard here that for space communication. Um, we, it was very important for us to have a representative from OHB. Andrea, how are you? How do you find the meeting so far? No, it has been great. I have been learning a lot and I realized how advanced actually a lot of the technologies really are. So it's, it's exciting for me to hear um, everything that is happening yeah. in, this, in the business, in the sector. So let me go full screen here. Do you see the screen? No, not yet. Wait. Not yet. Please uh, start the sharing. So that's, yes. uh, I always say this meeting keep you up to date. Um, <laughs> they are extremely important for the advancement of the technology. Yeah, now we see your screen. There you are. Yes. So uh, thanks, Han, and thanks, Jose, for the invitation again at um, Epic Online Meeting. Last time I had a lot of fun and I learned a lot. And this one, again, it's, it has been great so far. Thanks for the opportunity, actually. I'm here representing OHP System. And I will give a little introduction of who we are because a lot of the people maybe in this round, in this meeting room, they don't know about OHP. So to give you a little bit of a background, we are a company that started in the 1980s as a startup, a garage startup. And right now we grow to be one of the top three large space system integrators. Why I'm, I give this reference to the startup back in the 80s in a garage, as you see here, a nice picture back then, um, is because this experience of being that type of uh, business, a startup business back then, allows us to be agile and, and adjust to new type of businesses, to new markets. And Quantum was one of those business markets that we saw coming and quickly and very rapidly uh, advancing. It was very much a research or, or a topic um, kept for the researchers, but now it's quickly, quickly going into industry. So we were able, we were able to jump there and quite uh, play a quite important role so far. 
So at the World Speed right now, we are about 3,000 people all around Europe. Uh, the headquarters are in Germany, in Bremen, and also uh, Munich, in OHB system, where I am based in Bavaria. Um, but we also have companies, as I said, all around Europe in many different countries. We cover the full spectrum of space domains, so Earth observation, exploration, navigation, technology, human space flight, and what might be of relevance for today, security and telecommunications projects. As a quantum, we established a group in 2016 because we saw indeed like the growing and the potential of this area and especially uh, bringing that technologies into space systems. And so far, OGB has been established as one of those major systems partners in the realization of quantum technology systems, aiming to transfer the European research into the technology of tomorrow. As I said before, bridging that gap between moving from pure uh, research activities to going into business going into uh, pure technology into the market. The Quantum Technologies Working Group at the OHB was, as I said, established in 2016, and we uh, defined three pillars back then. It was quantum communications with a focus on QKD, and that's why we are here today. And actually, um, my role is business development at the OHB, but we have key experts in the company. The key experts um, for QKD, it's Bettina, I just highlighted here here in green, Bettina Heim. Uh, and this is actually pictures of the core group at our company that we focus, as I said, the pillars, quantum communication, but also cold atom sensors, cold optical atomic space clocks and optical frequency comms. And lately we just added the fourth pillar into our internal research, um, quantum computing. We see it's also important. So what you see here is the core team uh, that we have in this working group but it's more than 20, I think by now it's more like more than 30 employees only in Munich. I'm not talking the rest of Europe, but only in, Euro in, in Munich with a background in quantum optical research. We have, they have postdocs, they are postdocs, uh, PhDs, uh, uh, graduates. So it's a great pool of experts that we have in-house and we are exploiting that pool, pool of experts. So I have a good job today because everything about QKD and all the exciting and relevant technologies and needed technologies uh, for quantum communications and QKD are, have been talked and all the benefits, you all know that. And I just bring the space component into here. So why a space? Okay, we know that QKD is sensitive to loss. This was also mentioned today a couple of times. Uh, and it's a fact that quantum states cannot be amplified and that the fiber Base length limitation is only to a few hundred kilometers. We also heard that today. And that in fact, the existing fiber infrastructure might not be even suitable. So space systems allows you, will allow you to connect these two uh, nodes or two distant um, points on, on planet Earth, allowing for a loss reduction, but also, as I said, this key exchange with varying distant uh, ground stations. And this connection of nodes for future quantum, quantum, quantum networks, sorry there, uh, it's certainly the step towards the worldwide quantum internet, and it will allow these long haul links between metropolitan quantum networks. I mean, we heard from our speakers earlier today, um, some of them are working in bigger regions or for banking, for example, you might want to connect different continents in the world, and this could be only done uh, via satellite or the space quantum communications, space-based uh, QKD. The good news is that the technology is actually recently proven, so it's not something like really crazy here, but just happened recently. And China, for example, launched its first quantum satellite in 2016. So this is not only an opportunity, but a need. Europe cannot fall behind, we need to speed up. And it's really the time to work together, industry researchers to be at the forefront and not like following what China or other uh, economic powers are doing. We, it's very important that we secure our critical infrastructures in Europe. Uh, we don't have much time to go th through uh, all the projects that we have in, been involved, but just to give you a sense on uh, the, the role that OHB as a system, space system integrator have been playing. We have been spending the, the, the past four years uh, strengthening, strengthening our collaboration with uh, researchers and all the experts and also uh, companies that 
not have the expertise on these technologies. We have been maturing with them different uh, those technologies and especially helping them to understand which are the requirements um, that these technologies needs to have to fit into a space system. So we have worked on uh, projects uh, under the European Commission, under ESA, like QCI for EU, QKID for um, European Critical Infrastructures, Skylight and ESA, CUBE, which is part of a national um, program here in, in Germany. Um, we also have QNET, another national uh, initiative here in Germany, Open QKD. We already heard about it today. And we also even were part of a space quest, which was, this was interesting because QKD was not the main objective here, but it was a secondary science, uh, science objective. And it was, um, it's only on an early phase, so it's not yet flown, but it was um, to be flown on, on the ISS, on the International Space Station. So it's also a fun, a fun, pro fun project to work uh, with. So just to finalize, what can we do for you? As I said before, you are the experts, you are the ones who have um, the cutting edge technologies and we would like to exchange ideas on business opportunities within space systems, how um, the technology you have can fit into our space systems and provide you some guidance on, on how space telecommunications projects work, so the, the classical telecommunications and how we can integrate efficiently the QKD or quantum communications into those space telecommunications um, systems and help you understand which might be the requirements in a space project, in a space system uh, that your technologies might need to have or mature to, to be implemented or integrated in those systems. And all that, of course, leading to become a partner or a customer uh, with us. And kind of, this is an exchange and at the end of the day, an exchange is also what you can do for us. So if you tell us uh, really the, the latest technologies, the latest news on your technologies that you are developing and how those could benefit, could bring advantage into a, or how could they be integrated in a space quantum uh, communications network and the benefits that your technology could bring to that, that's what we want to know. You are the ones that needs to tell us like AOHV, you need our technology because that will make your system more robust, better performance, whatever. And that again to, uh, to lead to become our provider or partner. So with this, um, thank you very much again for the invitation. I learned a lot. Um, Thank you very much, Andrea, for being the system integrator for space in EPIC. This, this, this role that you have is unique because people can ask you the right questions like Quicks from the Netherlands, Jorn, Jorn Epping. What's on your mind? I was asking myself, so uh, what would be the best uh, wavelengths for QKD with satellites? So for optical fibers, that's obviously 1550. But for satellites, I don't know. So um, like, uh, I have to be honest here, I don't know the answer, the technical answer, because the expert on, on here, um, it's Bettina Heim, as I mentioned in the, in the previous slide. I'm working on business development to support them more on the uh, looking for the right partners, um, customers and so on. But I can uh, certainly bring that question to, to her. We had a, a beautiful meeting where actually OHB was also uh, involved on free space communication. It's all in YouTube there. And we had, a, it was quite complicated on that. We actually believe in, in microwave communication from Earth to the satellite and free space comes between satellites with a multiplexing on wavelengths. But every information is there in the, in the meeting. Thank you very much, Andrea, for being with us. And thank you all of you for one more fantastic, fantastic event. I, I think I agree with Andrea. I also learned a lot, even though it's, it's quantum, is my life, I learned a lot. But what I learned the most is that there is a lot of room for cooperation. I'm so happy that Epic is so active in quantum because from the presentation from BT, we heard that almost every photonic technology that we are so crazy about has relevancy for the system integrators. And they are not only looking for developments, but also looking for cooperations. And we also heard a bit about the plans from British Telecom and Deutsche Telekom to have nationwide, nationwide QKD networks. And these companies are serious. If they are saying it, because it's really in their mind and this is going to happen. Also, we heard about the test beds. And I want to stress this. 
Test best are not closed clubs. They are not like European projects in which only the partners are beneficiary. This is for the whole community. So you have technologies that are relevant to that. We can find entry points for this. Certification and standardization, that's key. And I want to highlight Adva, BT, IDQ, Toshiba. Thank you so much for the stepping stone. But now it is time for the rest of the players. They are actually already contacted the ETSI. They already have the whole standards, but we need to provide more input. And it was said before, interfacing standardization is something that is still missing. And space is part of the quantum internet. That's clear. That was clear by many, many people, but we have now great quantum technologies. They are not space qualified, and that's the next step. The next step for me is to say goodbye to you because I love saying that. I love saying that because I have really the, the, the way to do it properly. And the way to do it properly is to tell you that all of you are my friends, all of you are my epic members, and all of you make my life a dream. But remember, the meeting finishes, and now the interesting part starts the follow-up. I have done my job, now the ball is in your court and it's time for you to play football. It's time for you to make sure that you connect with the right companies. If you want to make in touch with any of the participants today, all you have to do is send me an email jose.poto at and I will be more than happy to make the introductions on behalf of the dream team of photonics in the world, on behalf of a fantastic group of people who love working together. I would like to say thank you very, very much for making our life a dream. Stay alert for the upcoming meetings and you can get in touch with me, drop me a line. I love talking about photonics. Until the next time, take care of each other. Be safe from the beautiful Northwijk. Stay healthy. See you. Bye-bye.